Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders, but instead of a die or a stamp, I'm actually going to work with their steel rule dies. So these are the cartridges. Um, Sizzix has them as well. They call them Biggs dies. Um, but these are by Spellbinders, of course. So there is um, a flower, um, a pillow box that I have here. I'm going to have a butterfly and then also tags. I believe it's called tag your it. So I am a fan of the steel rule dies um, because they, they are the epitome of a mass production, so to speak. Um, but what I really like about these is because the blade is so thick, the way that these are constructed, you can use multiple pieces of cardstock, thick cardstock. You can cut chipboard, you can cut burlap, fabric, felt, um, uh, not plastic, plastic, but some levels of plastic. You can cut pieces of rubber with these plates. Now you can see I've already pre-cut the pillow box and the tags. I used some corrugated paper which is pretty thick um, which is also by Spellbinders. They have these great packets um, filled with cork and corrugated and even balsa wood. So there are so many things that you can use to cut not limited to just paper. And what's best with paper is when it came to those pillow boxes, all four were cut at once. When it came to those tags, two pieces of cardstock were put down at once. So you're not constantly um, working with your machine. I dug into my stash and I pulled out some of my felt and I'm just going to cut some pieces, layer them up. I'll be cutting two pieces of felt at a time and in some cases three again that's the beauty of this now your plate layering is different so when you cut and use your steel rule dies you want to have a cutting plate at the bottom you're going to put your steel rule die next with whatever you're cutting on top and then you're going to have another cutting plate on top of that now remember if you only use one plate to cut down onto and the top one stays without any cuts you want to reverse that you want the smooth plate down on the bottom and the one you cut into on the top because those blades will go into that plate you also want to make sure that like, let's say you're using pattern paper and it's only had it only has the pattern paper on one side when you put your paper down onto the steel rule die you want to make sure the pattern side is facing down onto the steel rule die onto this foam base that it has there um, because it's going to cut up through it that's how that pressure works there's foam that sits around those blades um, when it comes to the steel rule plate the cartridge so as this goes through the machine, that foam is getting pushed down and those plates are getting pushed up. It's all staying the same. It's the foam that's moving because of the pressure of the machine when it's rolling through. So very versatile. Do they take up space? Absolutely they do. Yes, you, you must have space, but it's no different if you have some red rubber stamps on blocks those take up space as well um, you may not have that space um, they are great just for the base pieces such as the pillow box the tags um, if you're looking for large amounts of those this is perfect because then you can mass cut those pieces and then use your other stamps and dies to accent these pieces, to embellish them. 
what I'm going to do with the butterfly, I'm actually going to put that onto a tag. Nobody said that our pieces have to be the same size as the tag, right? Right. Um, so I want to place that there, and then I'm going to set one of the flowers just below. I'll use three leaves, and to adhere all of this, since this is felt, I'm actually going to use my double-sided, um, or my glue dots. That's what I'm going to use, and I'm thinking about that right there. Um, it's just a lot easier for me to use those. You can just place them down, pull off the backing, and then, boom, your piece is already in place. There are so many of the steel rule dies available. I do encourage you to, to check them out. Um, again, there are um, lots of things that I do like to mass produce, and that's actually tags. Um, I actually have a box of these already cut out in my craft paper, and I use them a lot in my junk journals. I don't know if you've seen those videos, um, but just to have these pre-made and pre-set to go is wonderful because all I have to do is just grab a couple tags and they're already there. I like the fact that you can literally use multiple pieces of cardstock. So what I'm doing is I'm going to punch a hole through all of these because the pokey tool just wasn't working for me. And I want to put a brad through all of this. So I grabbed one of my brads for my stash. And then I'm just going to set this down onto the tag. Of course, the vintage photo will make an appearance. Yes, there it is. And I'm going to ink around the edge of my tag. And then I'm also going to go around the edge of the butterfly and then across the top just to give those ridges some more definition, just to stand out just a little bit. I'm going to also take the hole reinforcements that are part of the steel rule die and just add some vintage photo around those as well. Again, it'll give it just a different color, and I'm not changing the cardstock. Simply doing this by ink. I'm going to put one on the front, and then I'm also going to put one on the other side of this. Usually when I do make a gift tag, whether it's for the holidays or for any type of celebration, I do like to make them double layered. So I will take the second tag, and I will score it so that that side can bend. And then I will glue it to the back of my original tag, where all of my focal points are going. I'm going to add the reinforcement, doing the same thing. And then I'm going to glue the butterfly in place. I'm going to use lots of glue dots here. I'm just going to fill up the bottom portion from the butterfly just so that the felt flower can just grab a hold of that. Because it is felt, um, using glue dots is awesome. Just saying. Just saying. And then we're just going to adhere that there. So again, not a lot of color, um, not a lot of um, blending or anything like that, but just using the felt, um, it can add a lot of texture to your piece. So for this tag, I've used cardstock, I've used some twine, I've used some corrugated paper, and then of course felt. So we have lots of textures going on. So for the pillow box, I'm going to add two strips of some double-sided tape on each of the side. You would need two of these to put the pillow box together. So I'm just going to add one strip to the top, and then I'm going to come in and add another strip. 
I'm going to make sure that they are adhered. I'm going to make sure that I'm inking around all of the edges, even after they're bent again, just to give it a little bit of color. I'm going to grab one of my hole punches and I'm just going to put a notch in one of those ends. I'm going to adhere the two sides on the tab, lining that up, and then I'm just looking at where I'm going to place my um, felt flower. Now this, of course, I chose a different color. I'm going to add three leaves again down onto the box. And again, I'm going to add all of this before I put the final shape to the pillow box. Trust me, it's easier. <laughs> you all know how I know. Yes. Again, using a glue dot for the center, I'm going to set that in place as well. Now, I do change... Um, my mind here. I, I am going to grab a center for this piece. I forgot to cut that out. And then I'm going to add a brad into that as well. And then again, another glue dot. This brad has a little tiny um, heart to it. I'm going to remove the release paper from the other side. I'm just going to bend it down and just pinch those two edges together. I'm going to lightly just press on the outer parts so that each side can be pushed in. And those are the two projects that I was able to make using the Spellbinders rule, uh, steel rule dies. Um, so again, they're not thinlets. Um, they're not the same as thinlet dies. Um, so they, they have more versatility in my mind because you can use more products with them. So I do hope you enjoyed these two projects. All the products that I used will be listed down below in the video description. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave that down below as well. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for stopping by and just spending a little bit of time watching the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love for you to join the group. So make sure you hit that button, make sure you hit the bell, and make sure you also hit that thumbs up. As long as you hit the bell, you'll always know when the next video is up and available. I hope everyone's having a great day, but always remember what's most important for me. Always be creative.